Hi class, welcome to the second part of the screencast on mechanisms of evolution. So remember in the first part we discussed the adaptive mechanism of evolution which is natural selection and that's the main driving force of evolution. But there are some non-adaptive mechanisms um, that are more random and we're going to talk about those now. So uh, in addition to natural selection, we have chance and random events that influence, influence evolution, especially for small populations. Because think about it, a small population, you're not going to have a lot of variation. And that was one of those key three components for natural selection to occur, that you had to have variation. So we've got three non-adaptive mechanisms to discuss today. Gene flow, genetic drift, and mutation. So first, gene flow. Gene flow is a big, you know, fancy term for simply, simply immigration and emigration of alleles into or out of a population due to movement of individuals. Maybe you don't remember what the term allele means. All that simply is is genetic information. An allele is genetic information. So gene flow is individuals move in and out of a population and they take their genes with them, don't they? So a really good a human example of gene flow has been seen um, with malaria resistance due to gene mixing between uh, Europeans and those people with African descent. Um, so these people of African descent, um, we'll talk about this a little bit later in the year, um, but they have something called sickle cell. And if you are a heterozygote for sickle cell, you are actually resistant to malaria. And that's all in your DNA. That's in your genetic makeup. So as these people left Africa and started to um, mix with those of European or American descent, those genes mixed. And so we start to see uh, evolution of a population due to gene flow. And that's not natural selection. That's not adaptive. That's just totally due to random chance that people are entering or leaving a population. The second non-adaptive mechanism is genetic drift. Now this is especially occurring in small populations. And we have two examples or two types of genetic drift, bottleneck effect and founder effect. Um, both of these um, are sort of characterized by a reduction in genetic variation within a population. And what happens then, because we have this reduction in variation, it actually increases those differences that do exist between populations of the same species. So what does this eventually lead to? If we're starting to actually increase those differences that do exist in Different populations of the same species, well, if you said we're actually going to start to make new species, you are correct. Because those small differences are almost magnified, aren't they, in a small population? And here's a perfect example. Now, I'm not sure if these are already different species or if they are possibly going to become new species because of their uh, differences. So the first one is the bottleneck effect. Um, all the bottleneck effect is, is because of some random environmental event, the population shrinks, it contracts, it goes down in size um, because of some random um, environmental uh, event. So a tornado came and totally wiped out 75% of a deer population or whatever. That would be an example of a bottleneck effect. So some consequences of that. Reduction in genetic variation. Um, what if the 75% that gets taken out had all the variation and then you're left with 25% of the population that all look alike, that all have the same traits? Um, now, that, that small portion of the population that's left might not be able to deal with other selective pressures because they don't have the variation to deal with it such as disease or predation, and so they could very easily become wiped out because they don't have the variation. Um, a classic example of this is in the 19th century, the northern elephant seal was um, overhunted. That's a random event. It had nothing to do with natural selection. Humans just went out and hunted these seals and drastically, drastically reduced that population to a smaller size. Um, and there's the northern elephant seal. And so because of that, they have a reduction in variation. And so maybe they're now more susceptible to things like disease. 
Here's a, a graphic to sort of show you how bottleneck effect works. Here we have our original population and sort of equal amounts, right, of blue, yellow, green, pink, red individuals. And then we have this random environmental event, not adaptive at all, totally by chance that this happened, and it could be anything. And look at what happened. Because of this, look how these distributions of individuals and their colors has now drastically changed. We have almost no yellow, we have far more blue, we actually have the same amount of green and red, and we have fewer pink. And now we see from the fifth generation to the tenth, tenth generation what has happened. Um, maybe, maybe natural selection has happened now um, during this time, but now our uh, remaining population looks nothing like our original population, all because of this random environmental event. It's really important that you understand it's random that those that survived weren't better adapted for it. Otherwise, that would be natural selection. So genetic drift is totally, totally random. And this is the bottleneck effect. You're sort of taking a whole population and you're putting it through a bottleneck and you're only getting a few uh, remaining individuals left. The other type of genetic drift is the founder effect. Um, this is a type of bottleneck effect where a small group in a population, small group splinters off from the original, and they're going to go form a new colony or a new population. And this new colony does not represent the original gene pool. Um, a really good example of this, and a human example, is in the 18th century, the Amish, only two members started a new colony in Pennsylvania, and both of these um, sort of founding members had the recessive allele for this syndrome, which causes skeletal dysplasia. And now when we look at this Amish population of Pennsylvania, I'm not sure of the exact numbers, um, but the percentage or the um, prevalence of this allele is just outstanding uh, because of those two original founding members. Now they didn't represent the original colony. I'm sure their original colony did not have a lot of those recessive alleles, but because of the founder effect, this population in Pennsylvania has now evolved to have um, this recessive allele become very prevalent. Again, totally random. Here's another graphic to show you the founder effect. Here's the original colony. Now, be, due to some environmental instance that could happen, a small group is going to splinter off. Uh, maybe in a, at a, as a microcosm, we have this ant population, and a branch comes and breaks the ant population in half. Well, that would be a type of founder effect, that maybe those two groups now go off and form new populations. So we could have one colony that's all red, we could have one colony that's all blue, or we could actually by chance get a colony that might actually represent the original one. But the chances of that probably are not too likely. So the founder effect, a splinter colony does not resemble, as far as genetics, uh, the original uh, population. So to summarize, genetic drift is, is especially uh, prevalent in small populations because there's not a lot of variation. Um, causes allelic frequencies to change at random, so just causing genes to change at random. It's not adaptive. It can lead to even further loss of genetic variation, and it can cause harmful alleles, harmful genes, to actually become fixed, like we saw in that Amish example in Pennsylvania. That recessive uh, syndrome is now almost fixed in that population because the original members had it. Okay, so uh, one thing before I have you guys answer your question for the video notes was the other last type of non-adaptive um, uh, mechanism for evolution is mutation. So mutations can happen totally at random. They could be caused by the environment. They could just be caused by errors in DNA replication. Um, or during meiosis, and so mutations is another big way, um, another big thing that drives evolution. It creates a lot of variation in order for natural selection to um, act, yes, but mutation itself can also drive evolution. So here are your question, questions for um, this part of the video notes, and I will look over these uh, when you turn in your video notes.